Give us an update how things are going in ministry. I know you've been busy traveling and rescuing yes. kids from yeah. trafficking. Whew. Well, we have, and we've been, you know, business is good. You know, yeah. Jesus said, hey, did you not know I'd be about my father's business, mm. right? And we've been busy, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord has been with us. We've seen so many people saved and healed and delivered, and so many children rescued this year. We just got back from the Amazon jungle, and we were down there stomping around. We went all up and down the river. We've been down there for more than 20 years. We've had rescue centers there. We built a new rescue center there last year, and we expected to rescue around 40 kids out of sexual trafficking in the first year. We actually rescued 120. Wow. And so I hadn't met the huge majority of those children I had never seen before. So we went down there and went and saw them and loved on them and blessed them and, and just spent a couple of weeks down there um, with them and found out, you know, our rescuers, what do they need? But it's, it's, it's actually overwhelming, you know, the, the amount of trafficking that has taken place today. And if the body of Jesus doesn't step up, well, there's nobody else coming. Absolutely. It's such a real issue and it's pretty much everywhere, even in your backyard, which sure is, is surprising to me, like uh, some of the people that we've interviewed that have yeah. shared how it's prevalent even here in, in the United States. Yeah. Well, the whole world is addicted to pornography. Yeah. And I just say, first and foremost, all the, all the Jesus loving people that are there, if you're a part of pornography, you're a part of the problem mm. yeah. and you're actually viewing a crime scene, Wow. you know? And uh, people, people don't realize that. Well, it's just entertainment. It's just part of being a man. No, it's not. It's actually partnering with a demon. Yeah. And I think that we're probably going to talk a little bit about that today. No, absolutely. So could you tell us a little bit from, you know, every time we see you, you've come back from another part of the world and you have so many testimonies and um, I'm sure you deal with a lot of witchcraft, a lot of um, curses and things like that. But of course, you're covered with the blood of Jesus and nothing stands against um, God's chosen. Can you share some stories or testimonies from your travels? Well, I can. And one of my favorite places in the world is India. Ah! And so I've been to India more than 40 times. Oh my goodness. I sure have. And we have a bunch of rescue centers in Vishakapatnam and also in Hyderabad and then way up north. And so uh, we've had some in what used to be called Bombay. I actually got kidnapped in India. I don't Wait, know if you know what? about that. Wait, we've got to hear I'm this from story. Bombay, so. oh, are you really? I'm from Bombay. Yeah. So right yeah. on. So, uh, but yeah, my when my son was 16, we had uh, a group of guys try and kidnap us, and we had to literally fight our way out of it. It was actually a good father-son bonding moment. <laughs> like a movie. It's like hit them, Ben. Yeah, so in the name of Jesus, <laughs> no. and we were literally Texans. prophesied as we were fighting our way out of that. And the Lord, the Lord, it turns out, you know, it's it's got a good ending. God Almighty saved us and healed us, and we're fine. And Everything is good, but but all over the whole part of India, yeah, of course we've ran into we run into witchcraft all over the world and people literally putting curses on us. And it is a fight. It's not like, oh, it's no big deal. No, no, it's a big deal. Yeah. And you have to know how to stand. You have to know how to resist. Yeah, yeah can you share a, a couple of those stories in which you've encountered witchcraft and, and how that kind of played out? I'm so happy to. Okay, so I'll tell a cool Indian story. Okay. Okay. So some of my favorite daughters and sons in the Lord are Indians, and we're in our second generation there now. And I don't know, I would say probably 10, I'd say probably closer to 15 years ago, um, we had a church that as we were building it, a witch came and put a curse on it, and literally a storm came and blew it down. And they called me and said, Pastor Troy, we don't know what to do. And I said, I'm going to come there. And so we immediately arranged uh, tickets to go there. We went there. We built a new church. Uh, we built it strong. And then we had a huge major outreach. Well, the witch was not happy that we had done this. And this holy man, uh, this man who is involved in witchcraft, and he came there in the middle of my meeting. And all of a sudden, the people parted. And this man came. And he stood there. And he chanted this mantra at me. And then he lifted up his foot and he showed me the bottom of his foot and he had like this weird tattoo on the bottom of his foot. And once you see that, you're supposed to die. Really? And then he stomped it down on the ground and then everybody said, okay, you're done. And they left. Everybody's like, whoa. And I was like, hey man, where's everybody going? And so I was like, no. And I was standing there watching everybody leave and not knowing how to handle that situation. Yeah. I just started praying and I said, Lord, this is not your kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. And God, I know what your kingdom is. And Lord Jesus, there needs to be a church here. And I was praying that and I was rebuking the devil. And that witch got on a bicycle and he got about 30 yards away in front of my eyes. And he hits a pothole and he goes end over end and breaks and snaps the leg that he had just cursed me with. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. And the entire village saw it. 
The entire village saw it, and then the whole village, man, they all started running over, and they were saying, your God is God, your God is God. Right. And Because uh, the villagers were expecting they were you to expect, Exactly yeah. right. And then he gets hurt. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, John. I want to tell you. I watched that man. He was out there laying in agony and pain, and people were literally stepping on him as they were coming over. And I went out, and I went out, and I helped him. See, we have to overcome evil with the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I called an ambulance. took about an hour and a half for an ambulance to get there. And I paid for the ambulance. I paid for his hospital visit. Then he had to have surgery. I paid for his wow. surgery, and I went and visited that man in the hospital. Wow. And I would like to tell you guys that he got saved. He did not get saved. But I can tell you this. He opened up the entire region to us. And we actually became diplomatic friends. And uh, he would say, like, Troy, whatever you want. That's a cool picture of him. You know, I, I like that. Wow. Guy. And uh, he needs Jesus. Yes. But he was like, you know what? Thank, and there's nobody else in the world but somebody who follows Jesus who would have taken <laughs> care of me like that. And, and I went, there's nothing the devil can do about that when you answer evil with the goodness right. of the Lord. Ah, I'm a little incredible. speechless. That was so beautiful for uh, the, to respond in the, in, in, with the heart of Jesus that, you know, we were talking about being the flavor here on earth. Amen. We look like Christians. Only a Christian would do that because that's what God says to bless those who curse you. Well, you can't operate in a different spirit whenever, whenever somebody is hurt or somebody is in pain. Jesus told the disciples, you don't know what spirit you're of when they, when they wanted to call down fire, Right. He's like, okay, well, you can walk in that spirit, but that's not the spirit I'm walking in. you got a biblical reason to do it, but that's not where I'm at. Follow me. And so I am, you know, while I'm adamant about standing up against this thing, we still walk in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And um, that's uh, that, that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, he will take you into the terrible privilege, yeah. the terrible privilege, which I just recently heard that prophetic term uh, when it comes to saving kids. Um, a terrible privilege. He'll take you into the terrible privilege of following him, walking with him, and demonstrating his goodness in the face of horror yeah. and face of terrible evil. Tell us the story about the demonic presence that you encountered in the bedroom in Uganda. Wow. Yeah, well, I've, uh, my wife is here on, she, she, she's just off set, and she and I was in Uganda. This is 20, I think it was 28 years ago. It was a long time ago. And uh, we had been doing outreaches in villages, and late at night, in the middle of the night, uh, as we were getting ready to go to bed, we were putting our mosquito net up, and all of a sudden I heard a sound, and it sounded like the sound of electricity popping. And I thought, man, what is that? And there's no electricity there um, in, the, in the mountain region where we were at, the Rawanzori Mountains. And all of a sudden, Leanna and I saw a light at the edge of the room, and it was a purple light that was just about the size of a quarter. And I was like, what is that light? What is that? And at once, the room filled with terror, wow. with unbelievable terror and fear. Hmm. Wow. And this demon began to speak from this purple, dark light. Really? And he spoke to my wife, and he also spoke to I. And it screamed at us in the most, in the most hideous, uh, most angry I've ever heard anybody, the most hateful the most vile, it spoke a different language, but we knew the language that it was speaking, and it told me, it was declaring terrible things that were gonna happen to me, terrible things that were gonna happen to my wife, and that I was gonna see these things happen to my wife, and that I was gonna beg for my death, and it was saying all these things. And we were rebuking it, and we were resisting this devil, but it seemed to have no effect at first. In the midst of this terrible warfare, this thing was happening, we were just rebuking the devil, and then all of a sudden, we just put our foreheads to each other and we started calling upon the manifest presence of Jesus. We would just started saying, Jesus, be made manifest in this room. And that demon started screaming, no, 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 no. And then boom, he was gone. You know, the presence of Jesus will run any devil off. Woo! Absolutely. Just run him, run him off, send so him good. out of town. <laughs> That's what he'll do. Wow. And so, yeah, and that, that spirit actually came with the Muslim rebels. Every mm. time just, and, and the, the, the man who was hosting our house actually said, actually said, we need to pray because the Muslim rebels are very close tonight. That spirit always comes with them. And the next morning we found out that they were within two miles of where our house was. They, they murdered people and terrible things happened. And so that spirit actually travels with them. With them. Yeah, it's witchcraft. You know, so when you speak of, so witchcraft looks different in different parts of the world. And what's witchcraft like here in America? My goodness. Witchcraft here in America looks more like, uh, it looks more like demonic carnality. Mm. 
and it also looks like major deception. Now, I will just tell you this, that America has been infiltrated with witchcraft and most Americans do not even know it. Yeah. They chant mantras in the name of a political thing, not knowing that it's a mantra. Um, and I want to tell you, it's outright witchcraft. When you say somebody's name over and over and over again that is dead, you're conjuring up a demon. My oh. And it became a political statement here. Yeah. Say his name, say his name, say yeah. his name, say his name. And that is literally conjuring up a demon is what that is. I first recognized that there was a, a huge demonic gate being opened at the beginning of 2020, whenever we entered into the year of the pay in the Hebrew calendar, which has to do with our mouth. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with, hey, it, the, the pay or the 80th year in the Hebrew calendar has to do with the breath of God. It has to do with he is our life, he is our breath. And immediately the, the, the satanic witchcraft mantra began to begin to be this, I can't breathe. Mm. And as soon as I saw people all over the world saying that, I went, gates are being opened and hell is being unleashed. Wow. And then our mouths had to be covered. Yeah. That's right. We had to wear a mask right. everywhere, everywhere we went. And that happened in the prophetic year of declaration that God says, my mouth will be your mouth. Mm -hmm. Your mouth will be my mouth. Your breath will be my breath. And politically throughout the world, a demonic gate was opened through the ignorant participation of even Christians being a part of these things and didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you some. I'll give you some satanic phrases that the people, the globalists that are a part of this, and we run into them all over the world in saving children because we rescue so many kids that are ritually sexually abused now. My goodness. And it didn't used to be like that. And now I'm talking about you know death. I'm talking about maiming. I'm talking about, but it's ritual. It's not just violent. Mm. It's actually wow. satanically ritual. And it My is goodness. a part now of the sexualization of kids everywhere we go in the world. We'll save this one and this one, but we weren't able to save their brother or their sister. And they were literally murdered uh, in, in a satanic ritual. Oh my gosh. And the, we started, we started coming across this here a couple of years ago, everywhere. It used to just be in some places, but here on the Texas border, it's the worst I know of anywhere, anywhere really? on the planet earth. Are you, There's like, no place worse that we see than in Northern Mexico and Southern Texas that's taking place right now. Oh my goodness. And we've been involved in 56 nations and I've never seen it as bad as what's happened on, as what's happening on the Texas Mexican border. So then what would your response to be to the body of Christ here in America? Well, a big part of it would actually be number one, number one, if you're partnering with, with a lot of woke ideas, yeah. you're not partnering with the word of God. You're not partnering with the kingdom. If, if, if I'm going to just tell you, the fear of the Lord is never woke. No. You can't walk in the fear of God and also walk in woke. Yeah. You just cannot do it. And so a big, huge word that I would say for the American church is this, Oh, foolish Americans, who has bewitched you? Mm. And that's what Brother Paul said to the Galatians, right? Mm. It's like, do you not realize that you're, uh, that you're walking into a curse, you're partnering with something that is evil? Uh, the fact that men do not even know sexuality anymore without knowing pornography wow. is something that we have to take head on. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to say, no, listen, there's nothing wrong with being a dude. I'm all about rescue the dude. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm all about, man, I want to see men walk in their fullest potential. Yeah. But no, no, no. When it comes to when it comes to pornography yeah. or when it comes to this, it, it, even what people consider the minor sexualization of children, mm -hmm. just exposing them to say, no, 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 no. None of that. Yeah. The God that we serve is a father. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, the devil is fatherless. That's mm -hmm. right. And he he actually spreads fatherlessness. Yeah. And so we cannot be a part of pornography. We can't be a part of any of those things. And we also have to have true wisdom. Does our church look like Jesus or does it look like the world that we live in today? And when you bring in uh, the sexualization of children and uh, drag queens into the church, right. and when you get up and say, you know, God has different pronouns and you start bowing your knees to those things. Cool. Right. I tell you what you're doing is you're literally opening up a door and you're screaming at demons and saying, please come and destroy my family. Oh my yeah. Please come and destroy my mind and my heart, yeah. my nation. Yeah. And I tell you, friends, we cannot be a part of that. That's absolutely true. You know, I want to show a clip. This is from a drag queen pastor. Let's show it right now. I am sick and tired of the BS. I am sick of the dishonesty. I am tired 
of the lies. We are on the growing edge, my friends, and that means that there will be more drag preachers. Amen? Well, well, my goodness. Uh, yeah, he's sick. Yeah. Okay. And he's also tired because the wicked do not know rest. Yeah. And he just made that profession over and over and over again. And again, it speaks to the condition of his heart. He says he's tired of lies, yet he's a man that's dressed as a woman. Mm -hmm. right. And he's, he's someone who is the servant of the devil who's professing the name of Jesus. Right. right. Okay, well, he, he's really not tired of those lies. No. Uh, so what I would say is this, if... If you just looked at that and went, well, I really do love these guys because Jesus is the friend of sinners. And I, and I want to say that. Jesus is the friend of sinners. Mm -hmm. But don't think for one second that that is the friend of Jesus. Right. No. Because it's not. No. And it's not the friend of your family. It's not the friend of your church. It's not, it's not your friend. You know, covenant and friendship go hand in hand. Yeah. Okay? When you offer friendship, you're offering covenant. And that's what Jesus offers. And the very symbol of everything that they do is the symbol of God's covenant, the rainbow. Right. Yeah. And they have a different covenant. They reject the covenant. So when the body of Jesus uh, rejects these foundational, simple things, what's real is um, we're not unsinkable, we're unsavable. And so, you know, it just goes to show because 10, 15 years, if somebody saw that video 10, 15 years ago, they would laugh and they would say, we would never be that deceived. Right. But that's how deception works slowly. You just become more, to right. more, more tolerant, more uh, accepting, oh, the love of Jesus, but that's not truly love of Jesus. And here we've arrived. Um, so when you, when you see, you know, America where we've landed with so much deception and blindness, it's like there've, there've been warnings, but you parallel that to the Titanic. Can you talk about that? Wow, I sure can because recently we just went, we saw across our news feeds, yeah. um, we were taken again to the wreckage of the Titanic. As, as I get ready to tell you about that, because there's a tremendous prophetic word in it, and I do want to just, if, if I can just add one more thing to what Please. you and I were just talking about uh, and tell you this, we think as Christians that we have to be nice. Yeah. And because we think that Jesus is nice. Jesus isn't nice, Jesus is kind. Yeah. Okay, he's kind. And it's one of the attributes of the love of God. There are 16 attributes of the love of God, and 16 always represents the love of God. And, you know, he, love is patient, love is kind. Mm -hmm. And he is long-suffering, he's kind, but he's not nice in the sense of he feels like he has to get along with everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. He offers light mm -hmm. into darkness is what he does. And like, well, it's not, that's not very nice. You know, don't, don't you want to be nice to this guy? I would be nice in the sense that I would be respectful, but I would not be nice in the sense of I would close the door to that trash. Right. Okay, and that's not nice. Right. We do not have the obligation to be nice. No. We have the obligation to be kind and to walk in the love and the power of God. Yes. And we also have the obligation to ignore, to not ignore the warnings. Mm. So when it comes to the Titan and when it comes to the Titanic, yes. uh, the whole parable of that, and it is a parable, a prophetic parable, is this. If you ignore the warnings, that's right. you'll sink. That's right. And it literally sank upon the very wreckage, the very right. wreckage of the Titanic. And whenever we come back, you know, we'll actually, I'm, I'm going to take you guys through it and show you. When I show you the parallel of it, you'll truly know that God is speaking because God is speaking through the headlines today. Wow. Oh, good. So oh, we've I'm done excited a full deep dive into it. I had deep That's dive. Awesome. Let's go. Button, right? Yeah, right, right. Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Yes, 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 I have. And I can't wait to get off into it. It's going to be so good. Welcome back to Ministry Now. We're continuing our interview with Pastor Troy Brewer as he continues to share great insights and revelation. You know, we just had the Daystar Singers sing so that good. powerful song. How yes. powerful is the name of Jesus, Pastor Troy? <laughs> the name of Jesus. He is one altogether beautiful. There's nobody like him. And I'm telling you, you can run the devil off with the name of King yes. Jesus. If I come in his name, that means I, I come with, I come in his authority. I, I come as a son. I walk in the power of sonship. He's given me his name. Yeah. If I come in that, then his kingdom comes. Yes. And I love the name of Jesus. And I used it, you know, I've used it. And again, against the witchcraft that we're very talking, that we're actually talking about today. And just like, no, in the name of Jesus, that's not how this is going to go. I plead the blood of the lamb. I plead the word of my, I declare the word of my testimony. I plead the name of King Jesus um, in everything that I do. You know, even uh, growing up in India, my parents being pastors and going into all sorts of, you know, um, neighborhoods with poverty uh, to help and um, 
tell them about Jesus, um, I would feel some attacks even from a very young age when I was sleeping at night, some choking and things like that. Mm -hmm. And my parents taught me, so I would say Psalm 91, but um, the name of G I would and, and, and God's presence would uh, rush in, and the name of Jesus was the only thing that would break it. Uh, immediately, the, the presence would leave, and so I know I know the power and reality of that. The name of Jesus, the authority and power that um, it carries. So for you know anyone watching, uh, I want to get into everything with the Titanic that you have to share with will. us. And I really, Pastor, would love for you to go into full prophetic flow with whatever God, the remaining time, whatever God puts on your heart. But would you speak to uh, specifically those watching that have gone through things like that, choking or like a uh, demonic oh. oppression and how the name of Jesus will, will break it all? Oh, so good. Yeah, I want to encourage everybody and tell you this. Listen, it doesn't mean that you don't have faith and it doesn't mean that you're bad if you're being attacked by the devil. I was attacked as a child over and over, that whole choking thing. I know all about oh that. I know all that mess. And what's really is it was because I had a calling upon my life. And I want to tell you, you have a calling upon your life. And if you have been experiencing that kind of demonic mess has been coming after you, terrorizing you, I got good news for you. And it's this, the name of Jesus is for you. And if you're like, well, I'm not, I, don't, I just don't think I have enough faith. No, I want to just tell you this. When you come in the name of Jesus, guys, you need to know that devils tremble at the name of Jesus. I've actually even spoken to witches and talked to witches and, and different kind of religious people throughout the earth. And they say, listen, we can talk, but I don't want you to say that name. Hmm. <laughs> and like, okay, really? Wow. <laughs> because it disturbed the demon that was with him. You keep saying it, saying And it's I was like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I let that slip, right? <laughs> but I just want to just encourage everybody, and I want to encourage you and tell you this. The Spirit of the Lord is for you. His manifest presence, if you have not invited Him into your heart, if you haven't done that, man, call the number that's on the screen and get somebody to pray with you. Yes. Man, listen, pick up the phone, yeah. call somebody and say, I'm having demonic attacks, and I need to know that I'm saved, and I need to know how to use the name of King Jesus because you can stand against that. Yeah. Actually, would you just say that prayer now so they can accept Jesus into their I heart? I will. I will. Friends, let's do this. Guys, guys, repeat after me. Just say, just say, King Jesus. King Jesus. I need you now. I need you now. I repent. I repent. I, repent. I have to have you. I have, I have to have you. From this day forward. From this, from this day, day forward. You belong to me. You belong to me. And I belong to you. And I belong to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to just tell you the Bible promises now the filling of the Holy Spirit yes. and says, hey, his manifest presence, the filling of the Holy Ghost. The, listen, all, all you have to do to remember, all you have to do whenever all kinds of dark and scary stuff, and I get scared all the time, mm. and I'm talking about scared. I, I, I'm in very scary yeah. situations and circumstances a lot where I think, man, this is bad. I just have to remember that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. Yeah. The Word of God declares that. Remember that Jesus is resurrected from the dead. And I just go, okay, Jesus has power all over all this. I'm walking with Him today. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Just love it. How simple, right? <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I want to say, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, please let us know. It's so important that you share uh, the great news that you prayed that prayer and accepted Jesus into your heart. And we also have a free gift we'd like to give you uh, entitled, Now What?, uh, it'll lead you in the next steps to take in your new faith journey. Just call the number on the screen, let us know, and we'd love to get that to you. So good. All right, Pastor, okay. tell us about everything with the Titanic. I'm so excited. Okay, well, let me tell you that God is speaking through this headline and that God does indeed speak through headlines. He's speaking through everything around us. Is Psalms 29, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the many waters. And when we're hearing God speak a word that's like, okay, I heard this on Daystar. Okay, I heard this on the radio. I, it, like, I heard this on the radio. I saw it on a billboard. It's like the same message. That's the voice of many rushing waters. Wow. Okay? And I know the voice of many rushing waters where God's trying to make a point to me and everywhere I turn, the word of God is in something, right? So while there is only one word of God, I mean, the, the word is one. Amen. The Lord your God is one. There is no end to the ways that Jesus can creatively convey his message to us. Yeah. He's a very effective speaker and he, he cares about where we're at. So because of that, Romans 1.20 says that since the creation of the world, even his invisible power and Godhead are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made so that, the, so that, so that they are without excuse. And it's like there's no excuse for not hearing the heart of God because he's speaking through everything going on around us. Yeah. One of the most effective ways that God speaks that I find is through the headlines of cultural events in every single part of the planet. Now, this is actually in the Bible because 
in the book of Revelation, when the Lord Jesus gives his epistle to the church, and we don't consider Revelation 2 and 3, how powerful it is. It's not the epistles of James or John or Jude. It's the epistles of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The epistle of Jesus Christ to the seven different churches. Mm -hmm. He tells one church, the church of Laodicea, because you're not hot and because you're not cold, but rather because you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Well, that word is still relevant to us today. Yeah. But did you know that that was a headline of the day? Because Laodicea was the only city on the planet Earth, the first city on the planet Earth that boasted of having both hot and cold running water. Hmm. That's true. That was their headline. Now, what had happened was because of the Roman aqueduct system, mm -hmm. system which was the only way that they could transfer water, um, it was open air. So by the time the hot water got from the hot springs, and by the time that the cold water got from the cold springs, mm -hmm. it was lukewarm. Mm. And so whenever the Roman official came out and they did the big ribbon cutting ceremony and he took his official first drink, he spit it out and he said, it's lukewarm. Wow. Well, Jesus used that headline from a cultural local event to declare a word that we're still preaching about today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that King Jesus is indeed speaking through headlines. Today, this, the, one of the big headlines that we're looking at is the recent horrible event that happened with this, with this submarine, for lack of a better word, is a deep water submergent vehicle, and it was called the Titan. And I want to say this before I, I tell, before I tell what God is speaking through it, that, that Titan is not, that, that craft is not evil. Hmm. And the people that were on it were not bad people. Hmm. This is this is parable. Mm -hmm. It's type, it's shadow, mm -hmm. and it's prophetic speech. And so it is not, in fact, literal. Yeah. It is parable. So basically, uh, to just cut it all down, I want to just tell you this, that the, when the Titanic sank, it was back in the year 1812, I'm sorry, 1912. And the Titanic was the biggest, the baddest, the most beautiful ship that anybody had ever seen. Yeah. And uh, in, in its glory, it was just incredible. Right. And on, on, the, on its best day, it was the greatest thing that anybody had ever seen. But I want to show you what a picture of what it actually looks like right now. This is what it looks like now. Right. And there is a, there's a scripture in Hosea that says this, that if you, if you demand to be so big and so busy, and if you will not repent, I will turn your glory into shame. Okay? A Titanic is literally a perfect parable for that. Yeah. Now, we know that the still small, vo the still small voice, right, which is 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, verse 12, it's the still and small voice. If we're too big and too busy, we will not hear the voice of God. Titanic was too big, Titanic, and too busy, radio room. Now, Consequently, that verse is a 1912 scripture, and that's the year that the Titanic that's actually right. sank. Wow. That's right. Did you know that the Titanic sank on April the It actually struck an iceberg on April the 14th, and then it sank on April the 15th. That was 47 years to the date that President Lincoln had been shot in the head on April the 14th, and then he died on April the 15th. 47 years is not that long a time. No. And everybody in America put, the, put that word together. They knew that word. It was also at Passover time. Who is the angel of death going to Passover? One of the most extraordinary things that actually happened in, in all of this is the type and the shadow of, there was a guy that was, he was a captain of a ship, and he was a Jewish man, and the name of his ship was called Masaba. And he sent a word to the Titanic saying, stop, 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 we can see your lights, and you're traveling on a moonless night into a field of ice. But he wouldn't listen. And I want to tell you, the Masaba means repent and turn around. Wow. Okay. There was another guy who, uh, this guy's name was Stanley Lord, and he was a captain of a ship called California. And he sent, a, he sent this telegraph and said, stop what you are doing immediately. And it made the guy in the control room or in the radio room mad because of all these warnings. So he sent a word back and said, wow. shut up, keep out, oh you're my jamming my goodness. signals. Really? What? Now, I want to tell you what the name of the guy was who sent that word. Shut up, keep out, you're jamming my signal. His name was Harold Bride. Bride. Do you know, you know who the name of the person was that he sent it to? Stanley Lord. When the Lord oh tells the bride, wow. stop what you're doing. Right. And, when, and whenever your response is, shut up, keep out, you're jamming my signals, right. you are not unsinkable, you are unsavable. Right. Wow. Well, this last week we saw the Titan. We saw the Titan happen, and I want to tell you it's a terrible tragedy. But I want to tell you, it parallels exactly what happened. They, 
they actually refused the protocols. They refused the warnings that came over and over and over again, and they would not listen. The guy who actually ran the ship would not listen. And on his 23rd dive down, it imploded at 3,500 feet. And I remember the captain actually going records. He was actually gloating that he didn't have any type of the certifications. Like it, it's like I'm going to say a pride that he didn't have that. The rules didn't apply to him, yeah. uh -huh. which was exactly like the modern day church yeah, today. Right. It's exactly like the modern day church today. So I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, repent. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, turn around. I hear the spirit of the Lord yeah. saying, don't continue to move forward. There's yeah. so many parallels. That, he was the billionaire captain. The, uh, the uh, Captain E.J. Smith at his Titanic was called the millionaire uh, captain. Wow. Uh, a first class ticket on the Titanic was $150,000 to $200,000. A ticket on the Titan was the same exact one. Wow. Yeah. They both fell in the same exact wreckage. Yeah. Right. That's because right. they would not heed the warnings. There's a huge prophetic word in this, and he's saying we have to heed the warning. We have, um, Pastor, we have like a minute left. Would you uh, just speak on that call to repentance, the urgency, uh, urgency of it, and then we will pray? I'd be so happy to. So I would just say this. Time is short, friends, and you have to hear this warning. Yeah. Listen, really good people have sank into outer darkness because they wouldn't heed the warning. Heed the warning! Yes. Jesus loves you. Yes. Stop what you're doing, turn around. Yes. You know what, we're about to pray for all of these people, and I'm believing that there's gonna be breakthrough for every single one who's turned around. Absolutely. You can just lay your hands on them and cover them in prayer. I Pastor can. Lord. Father, in the name of King Jesus, yes, we declare God, breakthrough. You, we declare, Father God, sir, a different season, a different time, a different day. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, sir, that you are releasing angels now yes, for the God. performance of your word. I rebuke witchcraft in the name of King Jesus. And I declare, we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in Jesus' name, amen. amen.